So we're back with another quick tip video. The last one, we did seven quick tips and it seems like everyone enjoyed that. So using what I learned from the movie Spinal Tap, 11 is better than 10. So in this video, eight is better than seven, right? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? For younger folk that don't know, Spinal Tap was a, uh, a movie from the early early 80s. Yeah, a long time ago. Anyways, enough of this. Let's hop into the uh, the tips. These go to 11. Have you ever needed to get a look inside of an assembly or a complex part? With the sliding section view, you can do this. Now to be able to use a sliding section view, we're gonna to have to use a custom plane since the default planes are not editable. So I'm gonna do a duplicate of the front plane. I'll enable the section option for this custom plane. Turn section view on. Now I'm going to right click and edit this plane. And I'll grab the Z Nomen and slide it. Now you'll get a movable section view of your assembly or part. You can avoid features in a solid model by utilizing your solid tree. In the example, I've got an equal scalp toolpath on this form. And as you can see, it's trying to dive into these holes and it's also cutting these extrudes on the side of the part. A common practice for dealing with these holes is heading over to the surfaces tab and doing a fill holes on this surface, followed by adding this new geometry into the toolpath. However, this is not going to deal with these side cutouts. As an alternative, over in our solids manager, I'm simply going to move my toolpath above the features I want to avoid. At first, I'll just move this above the holes and rebuild. And you can see this toolpath is now avoiding these holes. And if I move it up one more step, rebuild, my toolpath is now avoiding the side extrudes as well. Working in manufacturing, it's a given that you'll be working in both metric and imperial units. Mastercam has some features to help make this a bit easier. So currently, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that I am in the inch mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into the analyze entity function and have a look at this circle right here. It returns a diameter of 2.9528. Now more than likely, this hole is a nominal size. And we can see that if we switch this over to metric. Here we can see this is a 75 millimeter diameter hole. There's also some options when we're doing some geometry creation. So when I hop in to draw circles, the sizes that I type in will be inch diameters. If I wanted to draw a 12 millimeter diameter hole, you would type in 12 divided by 25.4, which would then return your proper inch equivalent. However, there's an easier way. Instead of doing the math in the line, we can simply type in 12 mm, and that'll give us a metric conversion. This also works inside of our tool paths. As an example, on our cut parameters page, if I wanted to leave an amount of stock in metric, I could type in one mm, one millimeter, and that will convert that to the correct inch decimal. This works when we're in the metric environment as well. So now you can see in the bottom right hand corner, I've switched over to the metric mode. Let me hop back into a tool path. This time on the cut parameters page, I'm going to leave an eighth of an inch in inches of material. So I'll type in 0.125 in and Mastercam will convert that over to metric for me. You ever get tired of clicking the step forward button in the backplot menu? In Mastercam, we've got a couple different options to make this a bit easier. The first option we'll look at is keyboard shortcut options. And for this, we can use the S button to step forward and the B button to move backwards. Now S and B are fine for your smaller tool paths, but when you get into something that's got a lot of code and a lot of lines of code, something like a dynamic mill or an opti rough and hopping into a back plot here, clicking the S, depending on your movements, could result in still a lot of repetitive clicks. So for this, we've got the option, we can move our mouse over top of the timeline of the back plot and use the middle mouse wheel to scroll through our G code. When creating toolpaths, you can save yourself some clicks by using the middle mouse wheel on pull down menus. As an example, I'm going to hop into a contour, grab this edge over here and make my toolpath like I normally would. And like normal, I come down to my coolant page and I want to turn my coolant on. Typical workflow is to click on this box, go down to on and click again. Basically, that's two clicks. As programmers, we like as few clicks as possible. So you can just put your mouse over this box and use your middle mouse wheel to select one of the states of the pull down menu. So going all the way down turns it off, scrolling all the way up turns it on. 
This behavior will work on any pull down item you can find, such as the compensation types and cut parameters. You can step down from each selection just by using your middle mouse wheel. If you're coming from an older version of Mastercam, especially those prior to 2017, you may have trouble finding a familiar command. Easy way to do this is on the home tab, we've got the command finder option. Here you can just type in the name of the command you're looking for. Not only will this tell you where this command is now located, but you can double click to launch into that command. It's always suggested that you add a comment to your toolpath so you know what those toolpaths are doing when you come back and review them at a later time, but sometimes you just forget to do it. In this example file, I've got stock models and toolpaths, all which are missing comments. Typical workflow to add these is to open the operation folder, go into the parameters, leave a comment, green check, exit out, wash, rinse, repeat for all the remaining toolpaths. This is not only a little bit tedious, but it can also lead to some unforeseen pitfalls. When stock models are renamed, they can sometimes go dirty, causing you to have to rebuild toolpaths. Workaround for this is to add the comment without going into the parameters of the toolpath. For stock models and toolpaths, you can slowly double click to change the name, or you can highlight the operation and press F2. This makes adding comments much easier and less likely to cause a rebuild in a stock model. When working with files with multiple components, sometimes we need to hide or show specific components in order to more easily access what it is we're after. Typically we do this through level management by making a level visible or invisible. Given the example here though, sometimes this may not be the most efficient method. This is where the hide and unhide function comes into play. Using hide makes it very easy to quickly hide everything except for a specific piece of geometry you want to keep on screen. Commonly the keyboard shortcut Alt E is used for this. So I've selected the part I want to keep on screen, I've clicked Alt E, and now I can interact with this one component and not have to worry about turning levels on or off. As an added functionality, sometimes when you want to turn just a few more things back on, you can use the unhide sum function. So from here, when we select that, we can see all the items that are currently not hidden. We can select new items to add to our hide option, and we can now interact with all of those at the same time. We can also do the same thing in reverse. If we have more on screen than we wish, we can go into the hide more function and select the items we want to hide again. And finally, to get everything back on screen, I'll use the keyboard shortcut Alt E one more time, which will bring everything back. As another quick tip here, you can use this hide function in conjunction with the invert. So say you want to hide everything except for this one piece, I can select this, use the invert selection, and then keyboard shortcut Alt E, and I'll only hide the selected piece. 